Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials. Ok guys, it's time to talk about VR Physical Sun and Sky. Uh, the way very physical sun and sky works is that it is trying to resemble the way sun and sky appear in real life. So uh, basically based on the position of the sun in the sky, the sky will try to adjust and mimic how the sky would look like in that specific time of day. So for example, at sunset when sun is very uh, close to horizon line, the sky would be very orangish and the sun intensity and brightness would be less compared to noon where the sun is at its highest point and the sky would be very blue and the sun would be very intense. And now this real world behavior can be simply replicated using very physical sun and sky. So let's get into it and see how it works. If I go to my uh, very bridge menu and light stack here is our very physical sun and sky we have used this before in this course but let's start from scratch uh, now before actually adding this you can see this is the scene that uh, which is uh, the same from our previous lesson but in this case if I go to my physical camera you can see in the lens parameters tag we have an ISO of 100 and f sub of 8 and shutter speed of about 400 so Let's see what we can do here. Create a very physical sun and sky. And the first thing you need to do is to position the uh, sun basically in the sky right now. This is the light that we have. And as I mentioned before, depending on the position of the sun in the sky, uh, the sky will change to accommodate that. So let me just move this around maybe to something and its height, maybe something like that. Okay, so here is it. Let me go ahead and actually run VR IPR. There you go. So here is the scene that we get by default. Let's go to our very sun and sky and see in the sunlight tab here is where you control all of your settings. First we have our physical sun, so if I disable it you can see there would be no sun and we only get our sky, right? And we have sun invisible. Let me just go ahead and You can adjust the sun the way you want and move it in the sky and whatever you want with it. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we have sun invisible. If I enable it, the sun would be invisible. Right now you can see we cannot cle clearly see the sun disk here. Maybe if I change the sky model to something like Hozek, we should be able to see it's the sun itself. There we go. I'm going to talk about sky models in a moment, but here is our sun. And if I enable sun invisible, you can see the sun will be invisible, but it will still affect the scene. Right, we have this atmospheric shadows and when it is enabled and we have an atmospheric effect like an environment fog, for example, uh, we can see the atmospheric shadows are a bit more pronounced when this option is enabled and you can disable it if you wanted to. Okay, uh, we have physical sky and if I disable it and rerun the IPR, you can see now we only have the sun and physical sky will disappear, right? Let me enable physical sky again and restart my IPR. We have sky only and if it is enabled you can see we kind of turn off everything, right? Uh, we have our uh, sky models and uh, these are basically 
determines the procedural model to generate VRA sky texture. Here we have uh, four models. We have this prism, you can see the default model. Uh, we have the CIE clear sky and CIE overcast sky and finally this Hosek. Uh, the Hosek is kind of probably the more realistic one but it's an artistic choice it really doesn't have to be any of this so based on the scene and uh, which one you like you can choose any model that you want but Hosek is a new one it's a bit more physically accurate so I tend to use this one most of the time. We obviously have our sky intensity multiplier which is pretty much very self-explanatory. Let me decrease it and run the IPR now as you can see we are controlling the sky intensity right. So if I just increase it and restart my IPR you can see there you go. Actually I can just stop this for a moment and go to my settings in the option tabs and disable VFE window even though we could have done it from here but let me just use this window here okay so here is sky intensity multiplier which is controlling the overall intensity of the sky and here we have this override background override GI override refraction and reflection environments if I go to my render settings and under the environment tab, you can see we have the uh, reflection, refraction, GI environments. And uh, when these options are enabled, the physical sky will override all of the settings that you might have here, right? And the physical sky will be used instead of these options that you have in your environment tab. Now we have a few uh, other options here. So let's start with turbidity and uh, turbidity basically controls the amount of pollution, dust and particles in the sky. Uh, lower values like for example 1 as you can see in the IPR result in a cleaner sky and as you increase this value to something like let's say uh, 5 for example uh, you can see the sky gets more polluted. Uh, if I go to something like 10 here uh, you can see uh, would make the effect to be very extreme. Let me just reset that to the default value. Next we have this ozone value which controls the color of the sunlight. By default it's set to 0.35 and uh, you can alter the value I think it's from 0 to 1 uh, and at 0 here uh, you get a bit more of a uh, uh, kind of yellowish orangish tone and at one if we can hopefully see it it's a bit hard to see the effect of the ozone here but here it's zero and here is one and at one you would get uh, cooler and bluer sunlight right it's not that much effective compared to turbidity but the effect is there so let me get back to the original uh, value uh, water vapor is not a very important value we have this size multiplier value and uh, this one controls ov obviously the size of the visible uh, sun uh, it basically affects two things one is the size of the visible sun and the also the sharpness of its shadows if I increase the size multiplier to something like for example 5 here you can see the sun this gets bigger and the shadow uh, is getting diffuser right you can see the shadows compared to when it was like one it's a lot it's now we have a sharper shadow a smaller sun and if i go to something like i would say 10 we have a bigger sun disk and a diffuser shadow now let me set this back to one which was our default value uh, we have this filter color and this changes the color of the sun based on the color mode down here. Right now when the color mode is set to filter and if I kind of go here and alter the color you can see the color of the sun is shifted towards this particular color and when the color mode is set to direct uh, the color of the visible sun disk this time is just uh, just the color of the visible sun will change not the effect so 
if I just decrease the uh, intensity of my sun to something like one, you can see we have this uh, color visible in our sun disk, right? Let me just get back to 100 and also we have this uh, kind of overwrite mode and uh, in this uh, it's like the direct mode but in this mode the intensity of the sun does not depend on its position so let me just get back to filter and reset the color to the default value uh, okay now let's see what option do we have here we have this intensity multiplier for the physical camera and this is obviously controlling the overall intensity of our uh, V-Ray Sun. So if I go something like 50%, uh, 20%, you can clearly see how it decreases the overall intensity of the very physical Sun and sky, right? So that's about it. And we have the ground albedo and ground albedo is basically determines the color of the ground in the V-Ray sky right now. If I, uh, I can actually go ahead and hide this uh, house and the ground so we can see only the sky model that we have and the ground albedo basically controlling the color of this section of the model. So if I just change this to let's say something like, uh, let's say a green color, you can see the color is changing, right? And we can actually take a look at the sky models here to see how they kind of work. So this is a prism. This is the CIA clear, CIA overcast, and finally the Hosek. There you have it. And finally, we have some kind of color mapping options. And these are pretty much very self-explanatory. And we use the convert to grayscale option in one of our previous lessons. As you can see now, we don't have that much color cast from our uh, sky and sun model. And you have some gamma correction, hue uh, offset, for example, if you wanna change and add, create some kind of more artistic skies, you can clearly do so using the hue offset option. Uh, okay, let me just, and I think we have discussed most of the important parameters here. Let me turn on my And let's see what we can do here. I'm just going to probably select my sun, move it probably to the left a bit and put it down maybe a tad. Something like this. And we can increase its size to something like two. Okay. And I think we are ready for our final render. You can do whatever you want with it and you can see, uh, as I mentioned previously, if you wanted to, for example, have a sunset situation, you just decrease the overall height of your sun. And as you can see, you get a, a sunset lighting set up very simply by just uh, putting your sun down using this gizmos here, right? So let's... Go to something like that. It looks nice, right? We can adjust the position of the sun if you wanted to. Maybe we can put it to the other side, right? So you can see it's very simple to control your physical sun and sky simply by moving it around. So I'm gonna just settle for something like this probably. And I don't know, size multiplier, probably one. And we can increase the turbidity a bit, maybe something like five or four. Now let's get back to three. Okay, I think that's cool. Let me just stop that. And in this render, for the final render, I'm actually going to use the brute force and light cache. And let's just go for a full HD render here. And I think we are good. Just make sure we have our denoiser, which we have. Okay. One other thing I want to change is just make sure we have the bucket render here. And now we can start the render. 
Okay, so here is our final render, and you can see. Let's go to the denoiser pass. So we have this nice, beautiful render here. Okay, quick color correction as always. Let's see, curve. We have this curve by default, which is cool. You can see it adds a lot of nice contrast. Maybe we can adjust the contrast a tad or not. I don't think I'm gonna change this white balance. Uh, actually, I think the render can use some warm color cast here. Okay, so I think we are good to go. So that's about our V-Ray physical sun and sky. And I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics, and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials.